Hey, slime bag! What's your problem, bro? We're trying to have a good time. Nope. What's going on guys and gals and welcome to uh, Good uh, Real uh, Hunting. We're out for the good reel so you don't have to. It's your boy Brad, the Brett Man's right over there and welcome to our first episode of Based on a Real Story. Today, what does that mean? T today we're going to be diving into the real story, the true story that inspired the movie The Conjuring, the first one. Not the second one, not the third one, not the upcoming fourth one or any of the other movies, but just the first one today. We're going to be focusing on the Ed and Lorraine's involvement in the Perrin family and all that fun stuff that went on, the haunting of that house that inspired the conjuring it should be a lot of fun man we did some research on it and uh, we have some interesting things to talk about birdie oh man and we're going to get down to the mystery mm -hmm. of that bitch basheba basheba <laughs> yeah um and you know what at the end we're actually going to take a tour of the actual conjuring house together so stick around for that it's gonna be a lot of fun i got some pictures of every room of that damn house we're gonna we're gonna dig our way through there uh so that's gonna be really neat man Oh man, it's going to be so neat. And of course, if everybody is familiar with the channel, everybody knows I love The Conjuring. Anything The Conjuring, I'm going to be a freaking uh, fanatic about. So I, when Brad brought this uh, whole idea and wanted to do The Conjuring, you know I was freaking signed up for this. So before we officially get started with our first episode of The Real Story uh, with The Conjuring, uh, we, of course, we need to thank our Patreons real quick. So let's go ahead and pull up the Patreon card here. Uh, these are our real hunters, uh, part of our Patreon family here, because they are officially the backbone of this channel, and without them, none of this is possible. So we want to thank them. And of course, if you all want to be real hunters, the Patreon link is in the description down below, so you can click on it, select a tier, any tier is fine with us, so you all can be a real hunter today. Yeah, and of course, if you can't be on Patreon, that's okay. Just being here, we appreciate it. Like, this, uh, like the video, uh, comment down below, share it, all that fun stuff helps us as we're on our quest to 1,000 subscribers. Every bit helps, man, so uh, much appreciated just for being here, man. Yeah, absolutely, freaking lootly And of course, uh, let us know your all thoughts on this first episode of The Real Story. Do you want more of these particular types of videos? And if you actually do, what story should we tackle next? The Minfield Horror House? The other Conjury movies? Again, let us know in that comment section down below. Without further ado, let's freaking get into this real story. All right, let's get started, man. We all know the story. If you're here, you've probably seen The Conjuring. That means you know what happened in the movie. Obviously... You have obviously it starts off with this Annabelle, this Annabelle thing, which we'll tackle briefly at the beginning. Uh, but then it, it moves over to this family of people who moved into this big house. They get haunted. Ed and Lorraine, by you know, played by Patrick Wilson and uh, Fear for Miga uh, Warren, come over. They help you know dispel this house of any uh, concerning elements at this point. So that's pretty much what the movie's about. It gets creepy and crazy. We're going to get into it. Um, but yeah, man, I think without further ado, let's uh, the movie starts with Annabelle. So let's go ahead and do a little side piece here, if you will. And talk mm -hmm. about the uh, Annabelle uh, haunting here a little bit. Uh, but this this was a 19 Annabelle was a 1970 Warren investigation. This was a nursing student by the name of Donna that received the Annabelle doll as a gift uh, in the mail from her mom. I don't know if it was in the mail or not, but it makes sense, right? Uh, <laughs> they lived together. She lived with a, another uh, nursing student by the name of Angie. Uh, and just together, they would notice that this doll would change positions, man. They'd be getting childlike messages on pieces of paper. We saw this in the movie. Um, mm -hmm. You know, childlike messages on pieces of paper, the doll would be moving around. There was another friend, Lou, who stayed with the two girls uh, who noticed that uh, the doll actually he actually claimed that the doll tried to strangle his ass and also had a uh, it caused him to have a bloody claw mark on his chest. Uh, so they did a seance. Ed and Lorraine came in. Uh, they discovered that uh, they discovered that the, the doll was possessed by a young girl by the name of Annabelle. She was about seven years old. So that's creepy as hell. Um, mm -hmm. And she resided there before the apartments actually were built that they were living in, that the nursing students were living in. Um, her body was discovered in the field at the apartment site before the apartments went up. So intense stuff right there. And then, you know, obviously, like I said, the Warrens got involved. 
Uh, they conducted an exorcism of the apartment and they took the doll back to their residence. And that's pretty much all there is to know about the Annabelle story. It's pretty much what we saw in the movie with the addition mm -hmm. of this seven year old girl that was murdered, I yeah. guess. Yeah, exactly. And uh, just so uh, they add the whole Annabelle thing into the Conjuring movie, you know, to kind of enhance the movie. But the Annabelle doll has nothing to do with the particular like tackling of the house that we're going into in this video. But which, again, a little side quest. We all love side quests on this channel. We do, man. Uh, side quest is always a good time. But let's get started with what we're here for, man. Let's talk about the Perrin family, who is the family, the main family in the Conjuring. Um, what is what's their name in the Conjuring movie, Bertie? Do you recall? Is it they're not actually the parents in the movie, right? There's something else. No, uh, the the names of the like uh, the mom and dad and the sisters and all that. Yeah, they all they're yeah. all different, right? Than their real names. Well, no, uh, actually, I think they're pretty much spot on for the most part. Uh, of course, we get uh, Car Carolyn and um, Roger. Uh, they're the mom and the dad. And then, of course, we got the uh, the daughters in the movie of Andrea, uh, Cindy, Nancy, Christine, and April. So I think all those were absolutely spot on. So they kept like the first names. Okay, yeah, it actually, yeah, it looks like it. So um, that's cool news. Um, so anyways, they moved into this big-ass home. Uh, it's called the Old Arnold Mill Estate in 1971. Uh, it's Carolyn, Roger, and their five daughters, like you said. It's a 14-room home, really big, uh, nice home. And we actually got uh, some pictures and stuff here. Uh, I won't get into the actual current photographs here, but um, here's the parent family here. Uh, old school photos. These are back in the 70s. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, this picture was taken right as they moved in, uh, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. Actually, yeah, I believe I so. And like. these are, uh, and that first, these first kind of two pictures Brad's showing off here, uh, they show these at the end credits of the of the Conjuring movie. So it's like, it kind of show you like uh, where all this came from, like the originality of things. Uh, and yeah, these are old pictures, man. And I even got uh, some pictures of like, um, of like the mom and dad and the, each uh, individual daughter as well. Uh, so, yeah, man, I, this is just crazy. That happened so much long ago in the 70s. I know, dude. Here's a picture of the house, actually, I think, back in the 70s. This is the house. So, obviously, mm -hmm. um, it's a bit different. It's still on the big, you know, big plot of land, a lot of acres and stuff like that, like it's portrayed in the movie. But in the movie, I think we have a picture of the uh, the movie one just to compare a little bit. Yes, here. we do. Uh, yeah, uh, here it is. Here's the one from the movie. You know, this it, it's portrayed as a much bigger, larger house um, in the movie. But, you know, it's still kind of the same thing. Uh, same same deal, just on a big plot of land um, out there in a nice snowy backdrop here. So cool house. It's not as creepy as it is in the movie. Oh, definitely not. And uh, again, that's just some of the small, like, you know, cinematic changes you have to make in the movie just to make it like, you know, display, like to make it intimidating. But trust me, that house that Brad just showed, the original house, it is definitely creepy as hell. And we're getting ready to go into some details into it. <laughs> um, do you want to do the pictures of the real family right now, or do you just want to kind of pop yeah, them up? Yeah, sure. Talk about uh, them? Let me yeah, pull you... them up real quick. Uh, first off, we got the mother. This is uh, Carolyn uh, Perrin. And then uh, let's get uh, the dad here. And that is Roger with rocking the awesome stash. Uh, I just want to go ahead and say <laughs> real quick I'm always a fan of freaking fancy um, stashes. Then we get the um, eldest daughter of uh, Andrea. This is the oldest of the five children. And then the other four, we get uh, Cindy Perrin, uh, we get Nancy Perrin, then we get Christine Perrin, and of course, I believe this is the youngest child, uh, That her name is April Perrin. Yes, and you know what, Andrea's been very involved, uh, She, I think she did a book, I know she did a document mm -hmm. documentary uh, it, as far as these events and stuff. And we'll kind of get into some of her quotes and stuff here in a little bit. Um, but she was one of the sisters, you know, the, the, the kids there. So anyway, uh, they moved into this home back in 1971, uh, just to talk about the home a little bit itself. It's a 200 acre farm in Harrisville, Rhode Island. So it's up there in new England. Um, I remember when they, whenever I, I saw when they moved in, they were, you know, they, they, they got there, they're looking at the house and stuff. I think it was one of the neighbors told them, uh, for this talking to to Daddy Perrin, he said, "For the sake of your family, leave the lights on at night." Um, is a statement that they they remember, you know, being told when they're looking at the house. Um, mm -hmm. Now, uh, we'll get into the events of what happened in the house in just a minute, but it, it's Andrea said, and it, it's you know, in one of the either the book or the the documentary after, um, and we'll have all of our sources in the description if you guys want to check out more details, but. 
uh she said that everyone who's lived in this house has experienced hauntings i don't know how accurate that is that's just what she's saying but the man that bought it from them when they eventually moved out uh he ended up just bolting in the middle of the night he left his car he left all his tools his clothing he never went back to the house the current owner uh, i think her name is norma uh said that she's heard some see she's seen and heard uh some people talking in rooms she's heard footsteps when no one's home uh some blue light shooting uh it, it, you know around in her room uh, little things like that. Nothing too crazy. I think maybe sh the house just sold again last year. Um, so mm -hmm. she might not be the current owner anymore. But uh, Yeah, because I was to trying to get you to buy or at least do an Airbnb <laughs> in it so we could shoot a skid. But you're like, oh, hell no. I'm too scared for that. Like, I'm not crazy like you, Bert. Which, uh, Dude. that's a false statement. I'm scared of shit. So, yeah, I'm glad we didn't go with that decision. <laughs> Dude, same, man. Um, but man, I, so th I, th this this house has a freaking troubled past, man. Prior to the parents moving in in 1971, there were eight generations of one family that lived there. Uh, and that's this was the Arnold. That's why they call it the Arnold uh, estate. Um, and over that existence of those eight generations, there were two suicides by hanging, one suicide by poison. Um, allegedly, uh, uh, one of the girls that lived there, an eight-year-old girl, was raped and murdered. Um, I don't think that actually happened on the premise, but it's, you know, it's one of the family members. There were two drownings, four men froze to death, and, and there were other things that happened as well. So a lot of trouble passed coming from this residence. Um, this is before the parents even got there. Um, so let's talk about what happened a little bit, Bertie. You ready for that? Oh, dude, I'm always ready to happen. And uh, since we're uh, going back, like, to, like, um, eight gener like you said, eight generations here, like, uh, let's show the the picture like this is like an old picture of the house back then and uh yeah there's somebody familiar um in this picture do you see what i see yeah there's this is actually the oldest known photograph of the uh the arnold estate and there's rumors circulating that that creepy lady right there in the middle is Bathsheba, Bathsheba herself yeah, that bitch, Bathsheba. Uh, right, but like right between the horse and the chair. Uh, if you see like the chair to the left of the horse, uh, right between there, that is uh, Bathsheba herself. Yes, it, that's rumor. There's no confirmation, but that's just uh, one of the rumors. On one, it of looks like here. her, according like to, to some of the pictures I've seen. Uh, like that really, really looks like her. Unless if she just has a twin, uh, twins, Brad, <laughs> twins. Oh boy. Yeah, it does look like her, man, for sure. Um, I, th I think it is, man. It's just creepy enough. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so uh, they lived here for nine years before they sold the house. Why? Because the economy was trash at the time. Uh, they could not afford to move out of it, essentially. They were stuck in the situation. Um, mm -hmm. And they had five girls to live with, and it's hard to find a house with five girls, especially at the price range that they needed. So, uh, you know, they moved into it. The economy started to tank. The property was devaluing by the day, and they eventually sold it in 1980. Uh, but once they moved in there, you know, they started getting some weird stuff going on. Uh, the first things they noticed, uh, you know, was that so they, they were getting this aroma that stunk like rotting flesh, usually about 515 in the morning. So we saw that kind of play out in the movie. I remember that was one of the lines where oh, it stinks in here, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah, I was like, and it's gone. See, problem solved. Uh, yeah, but that was definitely uh, like they kept some things like from the real story, but then of course they added some things. So like, if there's some things like they added in, we'll let you know. Yeah, dude. Um, some of the early haunts, uh, Cynthia and Andrea. These are ones that we're talking about. This, this is stuff that happened to them, I guess. Uh, but they said at first the ghosts were benevolent, like they were they were decent. Uh, they had a ghost woman. Uh, that uh, that smelled like flowers and fruits when she was around. So that's always pleasant, right? Apparently, this ghost came in and tucked them in at night. They kissed him in the forehead. They said, good night. We'd love you. I, I'm making up the quote. I don't think they actually said anything. But this was a ghost that actually came in and tucked the, the, the girls in at night. We did not see that in the movie, Bertie. No, because that'd be too. That probably be the scariest thing of all the conjuring. There, I'm just saying good night. I'm like good night. Wait, what the hell? Like, uh, dude, that dude, that freaking creeps me out. Like, God, Monty. Um, so I don't know if that was actually like you know true or if that's maybe they confused this lady for their mom or something. I don't know. But either way, that's what they they alleged happened. Um, and and then stuff would just be moving around, like nothing too crazy, man. Uh, stuff would be moved around the house. Uh. And, and the parents would be like, what happened? The sisters would be like, oh, we didn't move it. Uh, they would talk to the other parent, the other sisters and stuff. They wouldn't. They, they all denied moving it. So just little things like that. Nothing too crazy. It does turn the living it here pretty soon, though. Um, and while we're on that track, um, I do want to talk briefly about the game that is hide and clap, because this is about the point in the movie 
when the girls are running around playing hide, hide and clap. Um, so this actually didn't play out the same way, but uh, there was a situation, there was a time when Cynthia, they were playing hide and seek, uh, or maybe it actually was hide and clap. I don't really know. Uh, but uh, Cynthia hid in this 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 pine blocks, uh, this pine box, I should say. It didn't have a lock on it, didn't have a latch or anything like that. It was just a pine box. She hid in it. Uh, she was in there. No one found her. So she wanted to move her hiding spot. She wanted to get out of this damn box. But she was locked in there. Despite the fact there was no lock or latch, she couldn't get out. She couldn't bust out of there. The box just wouldn't open. She kicked. She pushed. She screamed for 20 minutes until she gave up. And then Nancy came in in the end and saved her ass and got her out of there. So that was a, that was just a creepy little thing that happened whilst that's one of many things whilst they were living there. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up because uh, actually they did uh, kind of like cover the Conjuring story uh, in a sci-fi show called uh, Paranormal Witness, which I freaking have a guilty pleasure of that show. I love that show, and they did this episode, and the first story they told was exactly the story that Brad just told right there. So I knew exactly what you were talking about, and just the fear of when she was telling that story uh, was freaking sad, man. And, and, and cre again, creepy as hell, too like uh being trapped in such a small space uh, i bet that really uh messed her up um after that incident dude i know it would mess me up man i don't like shit like that i know birdie once got locked in a coffin though at a haunted house so he could probably handle it yeah you know i just let them take me there like i, I was having fun with it. i knew they wouldn't trap me in there because i knew they weren't trying to kill me <laughs> uh so Things took a turn, like I said. It started off with Rose and Fruit Lady kissing him goodnight, but then it turned into some some scary shit. Uh, this is when the girls claimed to be uh, one of them claimed to be attacked in the barn, uh, you know, by some kind of force. They were hearing voices that were talking about bodies being in the walls. Uh, actually, one specifically said there's seven dead soldiers buried in the wall uh, to the kids. Uh, so that's kind of creepy. Um, they also claimed that th now this one's kind of fucked up. They claimed that there was a very bad male spirit in the house with five little girls, uh, tortured them so bad. They could not elaborate on what was done or what the torturing was. So they never did elaborate on that, but it sounds fucking weird. Um, and yeah, it, I just, uh, just got to make your skin curl a little bit. Yeah, I know. I was like, I don't, I was like, I'm glad you didn't find any more details with that. Cause I would have cut you right there because that would like freaking mess up my day. And we don't want to mess everybody else's day, but yeah, uh, just a very bad situation with the past of the house. Yeah, man. Um, Carolyn, uh, she actually had this one, uh, come next. This is like a ghost, I guess, come next to her bed one night. It's a woman in gray is what they called her. And this might actually be with Sheba. Um, at least what they thought was Bathsheba at the time, uh, came next to her in bed one night. This ghost said, this it's a woman wearing gray. She said, get out or I'll drive you out with death and gloom, is what they said to Carolyn. Um, now, this, like I said, could have been Bathsheba, but it was believed to be the mistress of the house, uh, whatever that is. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that shit you know, was getting kind of intense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, very intense, and um, yeah, it's been, we've been uh, keep on bringing up of Sheba. So real quickly, I'll pull up this picture. Uh, this is an alleged picture of Bathsheba herself, and uh, yeah, and from what my understanding and researching, uh, she likes to do what we call uh, allegedly uh, satanic rituals, and she's a believer in that. Yes. Um, so yeah, we can kind of dig into Bathsheba a little bit. This is actually who the Warrens thought all the haunting was. Uh, was completed by like like in the movie. Uh, this is kind of where they they came from. Yeah, and the speaking being, of the movie, this is uh, how she is portrayed in the movie of Bathsheba right there. Uh, so definitely uh, give me this uh, the previous picture instead of this picture right here because Brad was there with me. I got scared shitless with this chick. <laughs> yeah, dude, that one's creepy as a bofo. And you know, but Sheba's real. She's totally real. Mm -hmm. uh, it's up for interpretation of what exactly she was. But here's her headstone. Uh, this is her uh, where she she still lies. She still lies here at the same uh, cemetery, which I think I have the name of here. And you can take that down if you'd like to. But that's just a picture of that headstone of Sheba. And let's learn a little bit about her because like I said, yeah, and the tombstone she, is actually uh, not that far away from the actual um, the house, isn't it? Uh, uh, for some research because i think it i can't remember the exact mileage but like it's not that far off it's not it's in the harrisville cemetery i don't know exactly how far away that is but it's a it's at the same area um so mm -hmm. the sheba she lived next door to the farmhouse the arnold mill estate uh in the 1800s okay and she's buried at the harrisville cemetery um she was married uh, she had a son herbert and husband jordan uh, judson they were all 
buried together at that cemetery. Uh, but now here's what you're, here's where it gets a little weird about Bathsheba. This is why things started looking a little bit weird for Bathsheba. Why people started looking her way when the parents were being uh, haunted. That's because she had four kids, three of which died at an early age, younger than seven, actually younger than seven. Um, and then she eventually died uh, of a stroke in 1885. Uh, she was just, you know, she was a housewife at the time. Uh, her name was Bathsheba Thire uh, was her maiden name. Uh, her last name after being married was Sherman. Um, so basically it was, it was thought that, uh, I, I guess she was, there, there was no evidence to suggest that she was really a witch. Like she was in the movie, like in the movie, she was a witch. She cursed the land essentially and all that stuff. There's no evidence of that. Um, but there was some legend and some local folklore, uh, you know, some, some rumors going around about her because again, an infant died in her care. Um, that was kind of the same thing. Uh, she had three kids die from an early age, but one of them was an infant. Uh, and it was because there was a, there was the, 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 the cause of death for said infant was a large sewing needle to the child's skull. It's like practicing Laurie Strode shit right out the gate. I mean, that's what was going on here. Um, the locals at the time believed it to be like a sacrifice. Like you said, Bertie, like a satanic sacrifice or something crazy. She was arrested, I guess she went to court, but she was acquitted because there wasn't any, any evidence, but of mm -hmm. course the public was not convinced of this. And that's where the rumor mills started going, going up. The public always thought she was guilty. They always thought that she was actually sacrificing babies and shit. Yeah, and uh, that's just unfortunate. And they go into detail with uh, what Brad just explained with the story with the whole baby and the needle thing in uh, Paranormal Witness, uh, because apparently uh, Carolyn uh, actually had a uh, like woke up from a nightmare with a pain in her leg, uh, kind of yes. like as Brad stated, like with the whole like needle and all that. So that's where all that comes about. Again, all this allegedly like she was into satanic stuff, but I mean, come on, man! Like, does this look like a freaking uh, girl? next door to you no dude uh there was so a local historian said that uh Bathsheba was treated uh Bathsheba was they you know, I, I guess they they had help that you know the help of the of their estate i guess Bathsheba treated the help poorly uh and beat the staff allegedly this is what a local historian mm -hmm. said legend also stated that uh she turned to <laughs> the legend also states that Bathsheba turned to stone when she died uh, or was in a bizarre state of paralysis. But again, there was no proof of that. Um, so that's kind of weird. I don't know how much you you can read into that. But yeah, like you said, one night Carolyn, Carolyn uh, Perrin woke up and had that pain in her calf, which did resemble a sewing needle. Uh, and that's why Lorraine suggested that the needle uh, was brought to the afterlife with Bathsheba and essentially used to, to haunt uh, Carolyn and, and stab her in the calf and shit. Yeah, so uh, damn you, Bathsheba. Like, why are they so? Uh, if I pass away, be sure I have like uh, my ex you bury my Xbox with me so I can have my Xbox in the afterlife, not a needle. Because if you do, I'll come needle your ass. <laughs> oh, God, don't needle the ass. Okay, uh, <laughs> um. So, okay, Warrens, uh, so yeah, at this point, uh, yeah, weird shit started to happen, so they called the Warrens up, right? Actually, a friend of the parents contacted the Warrens uh, while they were giving a lecture in Putnam, Connecticut. Uh, this was after Carolyn became possessed, per se, uh, and she was really, uh, you know, after she's got several visits at night from the woman in gray, she became a little bit possessed. Um yeah. Ed and Lorraine came to the house, kind of like in the movie. Lorraine sensed a dark presence the second she walked in that that Arnold Mill uh, estate. Yeah, uh, she ca came in uh, just since like her spider. Like it, it's just kind of like the best way to explain it. It's like her version of spider sense, but instead of uh, spotting danger, she uh, kind of like senses evil spirits. Uh, and yeah, just immediately when she walked in, she's like, "Oh my god, this is not." Very good. This is not a good situation. We gotta help this family. Yeah, not good. Uh, so they they came in. They tried to cleanse the home and stuff like that. But ultimately, it came down to uh, a seance. And and we're gonna get into the the specifics of the seance here in a little bit. But that's kind of pretty much. It's not. It's, it wasn't an exorcism per se, like we saw in the movie where they they strapped Carolyn deal uh, Carolyn down and. And, uh, you know, she was floating around and shit like that. It wasn't quite, it was, it, it more, it was more of a seance. They were trying to communicate more as, a, as opposed to expel, mm -hmm. uh, demons and shit. Um, but, uh, we're going to get into that in a minute, but after the seance went down, it didn't go very smoothly. They actually kicked the Warrens out of the house and they never really came back. At one point, 
uh, Lorraine did come back to check on Carolyn, but the family wouldn't let her in. And they said, y'all got to pound sand. Um, so it wasn't really that quite, you know, happy hunky dory ending we got in the movie. Uh, but yeah, yeah in the yeah, movie and in, in the conjuring three as well, because there was a little hint at the conjuring thing that they got like flowers after, um, add some accident. So, Oh, look, the parents send us flowers. Yeah. Uh, did not go down that way. Uh, there is a rocky relationship. Yes. Um, so let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the, the seance a little bit. Um, so yeah, and uh, let's yeah let's talk about the difference because I didn't even know this so like doing research and getting the definitions on our notes and everything I thought I found this to be really interesting because I thought they were like really the same thing and there's it's sort of but definitely handled in a different um, approach. Yeah, uh, for sure, man. Yeah, so uh, so the they they decided to do the seance right, uh, and there's a quote actually I'll read from Andrea here in a second, um, but. Uh, it was pretty intense, right? This, this actually made things worse. This was something that, uh, did not help at all. This is something that Lorraine said her words, uh, it, it basically it disturbed her to her core. And here's what she, Lorraine said about it. The things that went on there were just so incredibly frightening. It still affects me to talk about it today. This is her talking about those events. Um, Andrea, one of the, you know, the one that I said, said did the documentary in the book and all that stuff. She snuck down there and caught a glimpse of all this shit. Uh, as it was going down, which is pretty intense. She described it as uh, the seance was scary. It was the most terrifying night of my life. She snuck down into the basement. Yes, there's a creepy ass basement. We'll see it here in a little bit. She snuck down to the basement to see this seance take place and she was terrified. Um, so they got there. The Warrens got there with the medium. Uh, Andrea watched as the spirit was conjured up and then threw her mom into another room. Uh, her head smacked the ground. She went unconscious. A priest was in the corner, pale as a ghost. He was freaking out. Uh, and this is, you know, the Warrens at this time believed that uh, she was possessed. Uh, but while that was going on, dude, uh, Carolyn was speaking languages, not of this world. Her chair began to levitate as she was thrown across the room. Uh, kind of like that actually is kind of like in the movie. So, I mean, all that shit sounded pretty intense. Oh, yeah. So intense. And uh, yeah, let me get the quick definition of the seance and uh, exorcist, like, uh, because like there is a difference. Uh, seance is a meeting at which people attempt to make contact with the dead, especially through the agency of a medium, kind of like how Brad already uh, mentioned the medium that was a part of, of this um, seance. And then an exorcist is the expulsion or the attempted um, expulsion of a supposed evil spirit from a person or a place. Uh, and and normally uh, how these things, they always want to try to do a seance first so they could kind of interpret it or like kind of like figure out what the situation is uh, before they actually do the exorcism. Yes, exactly. Um, and while whilst this was going on, they this like I said, they kicked the worms out over concerns of Carolyn's mental health. It was just it was not good at this point. This is uh, this is actually about the seance. This is Andrea's words about the, the seance. Um <clears throat> I think this was in the documentary that we posted down below. Uh, during that fateful night, I, I was certain I had seen my mother die. What everyone present in the house witness left a permanent impression. The night of the seance was a gruesome event, shocking and horrific. The definition of childhood trauma. My mother's body was rolled into a ball. It was absolutely heart stopping hearing her scream, watching her writhing in pain. And thank God every day that she has no memory of it. Uh, although she remembers everything else perfectly well. Uh, there was no blood and gore involved. Nothing like how the film portrayed the incident. Sounds a little bit like the, how the film portrayed the incident. Uh, but it was still haunting. Uh, it wasn't the Sheba that attacked my mother that night. But whatever it was, it was incredibly powerful. Certainly powerful enough to claim her life. And it wanted to. Uh, my father thinks she was possessed for the few minutes because she spoke in a language that does not exist on this planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's definitely a sign of possessions, too, when they're speaking another language that uh, some people have never heard of before. Uh, so that is accurate. Yes. Um, so that sounds pretty intense. And I think, uh, I mean, really, I think that was about all the information. Like, I, we tried to find, like, they didn't really have any recordings of it or anything like that. Yeah, um, trust me. I looked uh, everywhere uh, for those recordings. Uh, they mainly had recordings for the um, the second Conjuring. Uh, but again, we'll uh, discuss that topic later and get the recordings of that then. But unfortunately, uh, no uh, audio was uh, presented itself, like, with the, uh, with the parent family. Yeah, but apparently, I mean, the plan was that they wanted Carolyn out. Whatever 
entity this was was jealous of Carolyn, wanted Carolyn out of the household. They tried physically assaulting her. That didn't work. So instead, they possessed Carolyn to terrify the family so they would move out that way. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that would do it. Pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, I'd be out of there, man, for sure. Uh, but yeah, like I said, man, I, Ed and Lorraine, they got kicked out of that point. They never came back. Lorraine still, she acted as a consultant uh, while they were making the movie and stuff like that to kind of help out. And obviously they had case files on it and everything. But I mean, that, that's pretty much it. Like I said, after that, they stayed there for another, you know, several years. They didn't sell the house until about 1980, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. so they were there until they had the, the means to do it. And, and like I said earlier, the house continued to have hauntings after they left from multiple other people. God, I, I just can't imagine. Like, I understand like during that time too, they were broken. They just can't move out like how they wanted to, but I can't imagine just it's like spending like another, like hell, even another second in that house after, uh, the whole seance, uh, I couldn't be able to do it, but for them to do it for like an additional couple of years after that whole incident, dude, like first off, I give them props for being brave. And second, I just can't imagine what they've gone through, um, after all that, all those events. Yes. Yeah, so, um, another quote here I got from, uh, Andrea from her, uh, documentary here. Uh, do you want the audience to take away anything from watching this documentary special? Uh, and the main thing she wanted people to take away is that the Sheba Sherman was unfairly misrepresented, mischaracterized and mal maligned. Uh, even though we don't have all the answers about her life and her behavior, I want people to give her the benefit of a doubt. I don't think she's a villain. I think she was a mortal soul who struggled just like everyone else. And I think people should take a lesson from Bathsheba's life. Uh, a heinous accusation can linger in the ether forever. And that's precisely what happened to Bathsheba. So that's what she wants people to take away. But if it wasn't Bathsheba who did all this shit, then who was it? Um, mm. And that's when she answered, Probably Mrs. Arnold. She's the original resident of this home. She hung herself in the barn uh, many, many years ago. And I think her husband even took her out of the, the hanging situation and put her in the house so people wouldn't know she killed herself. Um, so there was some some shit going on there with that. So that's the accusation, I guess, at this point from Andrea Perrin. Yeah, and uh, Andrea is a lot better human being than I am because I still think of Shiba was an evil bitch uh, myself. <laughs> but, uh, but again... Uh, that that's actually a great point on something I just never really thought about because you know in the conjuring 2 uh the nun uh was using that you know the spirit of that particular house like to try to do things and all that uh so I never really thought about like in real life it could have been um Mrs. Arnold that could have been the mastermind behind everything and kind of like, putting all the blame on Bathsheba so that is a amazing uh possibility on that yeah, dude. Absolutely, man. I think that's about it from the story. Was there anything else that we left out or anything that you wanted to bring up or anything like that? No, nah, I think we pretty much cover uh, most of the basics of everything. Again, we try to dive into this uh, with as much details as we can, uh, and I felt like we uh, definitely cover uh, the majority of the importance of this whole story. <laughs> uh, but I, you know what I'm freaking excited about when you told me about it? We gotta freaking take a tour of this house. Yes. All right. Let's do that, man. Let's start off on the app. This is like I said, it sold, I think, last year from what the article said. I'm not sure if it was last year, probably 2021. Um, here's what it, here's from the listing photo, what the house looks like today. Um, pretty much the same as it did back in the 70s. They just, it just looks like they changed the siding. Uh, it's still out there in the middle of this farm. It looks like there's a freaking presence about it because the fucking clouds over it are very ominous. But you know what? It's a cool looking house, though. Um, Let's get Yeah, in. I like the wood. I like the log uh, feel of everything with the property and everything. So I actually uh, am a sucker <laughs> for these kind of houses. Yeah, dude, I agree too, man. And let's get on the inside because this house had a virtual tour. So I, of course, took the tour and screenshotted just about every room. This is uh, just, you know, random ass room. Nothing too exciting here. This is uh, this was kind of towards the back, if I remember. I think maybe that door goes outside like the second entrance, but it's kind of towards the back on a, that different level um this is kind of coming up that way and it looks like whoever lives there is doing some sort of uh i don't know if they're letting people come and tour it or whatnot but there's a lot of pictures actually of the poster like that you can see the conjuring poster there uh there's like people can sign the, the wall nun lady. Like that. yeah they have the nun lady it's, it looks like people I, can. oh like, my god i just now see um i survived uh, what a very appropriate uh, little uh, banner they put right there. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Uh, it, it looks like people can. It, I, it looks like they probably do some kind of ghost tour. People can stay there or something like that. So I can see <clears> some writing cool. on the right side of the wall too. They're allowed to write on the wall. I'm guessing. Yeah, it looks like you probably sign the wall after you visit. Uh, this is kind of coming up that way. This is, uh, I guess, like the main like kind of living room area coming out of that. Um, you know, it's very classic, man. Still very, you know, 70s, well, way beyond 70s uh, vibes. Similar to the movie, too. It is, yeah. The color scheme, everything is very similar. And I think this is actually, we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, here's a little, uh, a different room kind of coming off of that. Obviously, you see the Conjuring poster, the Nun uh, poster hanging up right in front of you, which is scary as fuck. And yeah, they got t-shirts and chairs and all kinds of stuff. So that's definitely. Hey, I give them credit. They're smart. Oh, yeah, dude, they're probably racking stacks, man. Um, I thought this was kind of creepy. This is just, this was actually upstairs in between two bedrooms. Uh, there's like, this is like the chimney that comes up through between the two rooms. And it kind of reminded me of the movie where, uh, where, uh, you know, they, there was that secret little pathway that went to like that, that little chimney or whatever it was, and, and rain fell through there. Uh, but that was just kind of creepy looking, man. Mm, dude, I do not want that to be my closet because I will not go in there. <laughs> And here's the, uh, I think this is the outside of that. This is, you can kind of see where the rooms are. This is one bedroom across the hall is another bedroom. This is upstairs. Um, yeah, so we go back downstairs. This is the dining room. This is kind of, like, this kind of reminds me of the movie. This kind of reminds me of the movie a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely really does. Uh, that uh, kitchen, uh, that pre that table looks very familiar. So spot on with that. Yeah, it's kind of like where they were sitting there listening to those tapes that one time. Uh, mm -hmm. so that's kind of cool uh, this again just another shot of the dining room nothing too crazy uh, this is the kitchen uh, just kind of I took this shot just because you can kind of see out the back door how it does kind of resemble the the land uh, in the movie um, and and the kitchen too man that's where that that girl with a cut wrist was like look what you made me do Taylor Swift style oh dude. my god <laughs> <clears throat> oh, oh my you know no, next next picture <laughs> like I'm supposed to be the pun guy but oh shit there's regularly in Yep, there's Annabelle, man. Uh, not the real one, but the... Yeah, real uh, quickly, we've got to mention that when we talked about uh, Annabelle earlier. Uh, obviously, uh, the Annabelle you see in the movies and all that, uh, that does not what it looked like. It was originally a regular Ann doll, but I'm pretty sure most of y'all knew that. But just in case... Look at these mof... These guys are playing with fire, dude. They got the Annabelle doll. They got Ouija boards up on the fireplace, Bertie. Yeah. They, they, they are just, asking they, for They trouble. are asking for trouble. <laughs> Uh, no, we're not going to go down there yet. Hold on a second. Oh, God. Um, so, save, yeah. Yeah, save that for last. Your question is, does the place have a creepy-ass basement? Yes, it does. And there's actually, uh, this is that room earlier with the fireplace. This door right here, that brown door, actually is the door to the basement. There's two doors that go down there. It's a huge basement. Let's go down there and see what the hell that basement is about. I'd rather so not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now it wasn't hidden behind any hidden walls or anything like that, but it was there nonetheless and i think this is the stairs going down into that basement this is where the seance was done i don't know what room it was because we're about to find out how big this place actually is um but yeah it goes down in there creepy as a motherfucker creepy as a motherfucker um yeah uh kind of looks like a freaking dungeon uh <laughs> in a dungeon that i don't want to be a part of but yeah dude even like I'll give like the Conjury movie super credit. They did their research when uh, setting up the house and or kind of like their scenes and get the whole feel of the house. They're really mostly spot on with everything. Yeah, dude, you can see that place. That little nook over there to the left is a perfect spot for a seance, man. I don't know if that's where they did yeah, it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that did. chair where that chair was. Uh, feds, that's where they did it. And you think, man, this is all like this is all really old school, man. This is coming down the stairs. I think from the door from uh, a second ago. I, the pictures were a little bit out of order from where I. Hell, they it, even but... got the stairs freaking accurate too. Look at this Ouija board they got back here in the back, man. Freaking big old. This is where this is the séance room for sure. This has to be the <sighs> séance room. Has yeah, to it looks be. like they still they still do séances down there, man. Uh, <laughs> Every Friday, uh, séance special for a hundred dollars. <laughs> Here's like the big furnace and stuff, I guess, where I think, uh, you know, uh, your boy Roger had to go down there and fix that shit on the reg. Uh, <laughs> another, oh, man, talking about moisture issues, man. This place has it, I tell you. Mm. Uh, yeah, man. Hey, it's got to pee not... somewhere. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, kind of the same thing. Old school, old school, old school, man. Furnaces, stairs. This is another stairwell over to the left that goes up to a different room in the house, but that door was shut uh, whilst doing the tour, so I couldn't go through. Uh, and this is kind of looking up towards that. Uh, but man, dude, like how creepy is this basement, man? Could you not see these two people down in there doing their thing, uh, doing all that crazy stuff? Just put them right here, man. Um, maybe not there. Maybe right here. Just, just crop them in. Um, creepy stuff, man. I Would you stay in the basement or no? Hell no. You can't pay me enough money to stay in that basement. Uh, like, not even a minute. Like, hell, no, hell to the no, no. Hell to the no, no, to the no, no. I will never stay in that basement. I don't blame you, man. But that's Even pretty that, that would make a good speak. That would make a good skit, though. Oh yeah, for sure, dude. I think that's <laughs> I think that's the full tour, man. That's at least the screenshots I got. But I encourage you guys. I think that link for this will be in the description as well for the listing. You can go in there and kind of follow it around yourself. It's kind of creepy walking through there, um, and and you know you, you never know what you're gonna see in that house. But it, it was cool. It was a cool experience seeing it. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, that was a good experience. That was the first time I got to solve the inner part of the house and when Brad Lodi's pictures, I avoided them until this video. Uh, dude, yeah, man. That's just freaking crazy with how spot on James Wan and his staff were with uh, making the house uh, feel as realistic as possible. And uh, actually, one more picture I want to show off real quick because I thought this was a really cool picture as I was looking stuff up. Uh, the, uh, the top people, uh, the adults, those are the original, uh, parent sisters, and they are, uh, with the cast members that played those sisters in the movie. So, like, uh, the particular daughter, like, let's say Andrea, for example, which I'm pretty sure is the far right one, she is with the actress that played, uh, young Andrea in the movie, too, so I thought that was just a really cool picture. Yeah, I like that, actually, that's really cool. Yeah, man. So, uh, yeah, dude, anything else uh, about this real story of The Conjuring? Dude, I think that's about it. Alrighty. Uh, so, guys, that is the real story of The Conjuring. We hope you enjoyed this uh, particular video. And, again, if you are interested and want us to do uh, more videos like this with the real story, but with other movies, uh, or kind of like other, like, legends, like, again, for example, the Amityville Horror House, of course, will definitely be one we do. And then the other Conjuring stories that The Conjuring Universe has uh, played off of. Let us know in the comic section down below as always we can keep that discussion rolling and brad where can they find us if you guys want to find us you can do so by finding us on <laughs> facebook instagram letterbox twitter tiktok and of course patreon those are links for you to find right down below absolutely freaking lootly and as brad already said already uh the links for our researches and the tour of the house will all be in the description down below so we appreciate all those links um as we are uh looking up all this information for this particular video we appreciate your service and uh yeah that's freaking it so we'll freaking see you for the next real story <laughs>